LearningMeasure.tv Science and Engineering Podcast with Emphasis on Measurement Brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com Episode 15 Mesh Current Analysis Hello, I'm uh, David Archer I'm the owner of uh, LearningMeasure.com and LearningMeasure.tv. Uh, LearningMeasure.tv, this podcast is sponsored by TradePub.com, GoToMeeting.com, and is part of the Blueberry community of podcasts. Uh, first of all, what's going on with LearningMeasure.com? LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based training service. Um, well, of course, it's more than that. Um, that uh, you can sign up for for two free weeks of training and then after that access to all the features of the site and the training materials is uh, five dollars a month. What we do have some news is I come up with a new uh, training manual that I'll um, be hopefully putting on the store by the time this website with this podcast airs. Uh, It's on DC circuit theory uh, covers the materials from EE 101, EE 121, and Measurement 120, but it also has more mater- a little bit more material um, covering DC circuit theory. Um, look for that on the on the store. That's one of our. This is going to be the first in a series of electrical engineering related uh, training manuals that will be uh, that we're developing. Okay. Um, what we've decided to do for the next few pod podcasts, I'm not sure how many, is um, to talk about some basic antenna and propagation stuff. Um, in particular, this episode, we're going to talk about the isotropic radiator. We've seen the isotropic radiator before in pre- previous podcasts. And first of all, I want to review a little bit of that. First of all, wave phenomena. You've got to look, review some of that first. Uh, a wave of any type has something called a wavelength associated with it. And the wavelength is, this, is equal to the speed over the frequency, speed of the wave over the frequency. This wavelength is how often it, re- th- it repeats itself in space. So for a sinusoidal wave, let's say e to the i, th- I theta, okay, you have, um, uh, it's going to be something like where theta is the phase. The phase is going to change in one wavelength in some distance. It's going to be 2 pi when the distance it travels over a wavelength is 1. So when this happens, it's 2 pi. It's, It's back to where it started. So this special, this, this 2 pi over lambda is a special symbol k wave vector. So this is equal to kr. Okay. So in general, the phase of a wave going in a particular direction, r, is going to be I k, e to the i k r. Okay. In, in that direction. Now we're going to talk about isotropic radiators that do spheric that are spherical waves. Now, so an isotropic radiator, let's say a point, you draw a sphere around it. It's is some mythical object that radiates power equally in all directions. Well, if you look at the power radiated. Uh, and the power per unit area hitting the sphere, the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the power per unit area, called S, is the power radiated divided by 4 pi r squared. Simple as that. But the important thing is this power per unit area is proportional to 1 over r squared. Well, power in electromagnetics or acoustics is, in the, in the case of electromagnetics, you've got 
uh, uh, electric field fields or magnetic fields and acoustics, you have pressure. That in the in this the power is proportional to either the field squared or the pressure squared. So for an isotropic radiator, the fields let's say E, is proportional to 1 over R. Well, we already know the phase goes like E to the IKR. So the most general form is some com complex for uh, the field for an isotropic radiator uh, scalar is some E to the IKR over R. Now, this is a complex constant of some sort. We can break this into a real and imaginary part just for fun. Or sorry, I mean a magnitude and phase. So we'll, ha we'll say this is some real number C times e to the i phi. My handwriting's horrible. Times e to the i k r over r which of course then can be written as where this C E to the I K R plus phi over R. Where this is a real constant for the, to, for the amplitude and this is a real constant phase. Okay, so what, what, are, we go, what are we gonna do with that? Well, before we do anything with that, um, Got to pay some bills. So, huh. remember when people had to conduct business without email? Hard to imagine, right? Well, just as email redefined the way business people communicate, the new GoToMeeting web conferencing solution is transferring the way we meet today. You get unlimited meetings for one flat rate. You don't have to worry about seats or overage charges. Easy to use. Anyone can start a meeting with just a click. It's secure. End-to-end -end encryption uses industry standard 128-bit AES encryption. You can record your meeting. You can email it, post it to your site, or review it later. Try it yourself, free for 45 days. Just visit gotomeeting.com forward slash podcast. That's gotomeeting.com forward slash podcast. Try GoToMeeting today. Okay, that's fine for one isotropic radiator. So let's... We'll rewrite that in a second. Let's erase all this. But what we're interested in now is two isotropic radiators. So we're only going to talk about two of them. So what we'll do is imagine that we put two, this is the z-axis in some coordinate system, and we'll put them, the isotropic radiators, at plus L over 2 and minus L over 2. Okay, and we're going to say, we'll, call, we'll let, call this 1 and 2. Isotropic radiator 1 and isotropic radiator 2. In general, we can say the field of an isotropic radiator is some sort of complex constant, or some sort of real constant, times E to the I K R plus phi, where phi is the initial phase, or the phase this is set to over R. Okay, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll pick some arbitrary point in space, call it P. Okay, and from the distance from the origin to that point is R, and the distance from one isotropic radiator is R2, and from here it's R1. Well, in general, the field at point P is going to be E at, P, at the point P is going to be C1 E to the I K R1 plus V over uh, V1 over R1 plus C2 e to the i k r2 plus V2 over R2. 
Okay. Well, can't do much with that. So what, what we need to do is figure out, say this is some angle theta here. We need to figure out R1 and R2 in terms of R and theta. That's well, a fairly easy problem, okay, because this distance here is r cosine theta, and this distance here is r sine theta, basic tri trigonometry. Okay, and we were interested in what the field looks like as a function of theta, or as a function of r, or a function of l, I should say. So what, what, what is that? Well, what's r2? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle here. This distance here is still r cosine theta, and this distance here is r, co r sine theta minus L over 2, right? So this is going to equal from the Pythagorean theorem uh, r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta minus L over 2 squared. Okay, what's R1? Well, you can do the same sort of argument and you get R1 equals square root of r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta plus L over 2 squared. Okay, now we have an expression for the field at an arbitrary point for two isotropic radiators. Um, what we're going to do now is implement these equations in Excel and show you what happens. That's what we'll do next. Okay, here we are with the spreadsheet. Um, what we started out, this is the pat or power pattern of an isotropic radiator here. Um, if you look around, it's nice and circular. I started out with two controls here. One of them is for, sp for spacing along here. Um, this is a spacing control. So what this is now is they're right on top of each other, zero spacing. You have a nice circular pattern, which is you should be expected for an isotropic radiator. And then as you start moving these isotropic radiators apart, keeping everything else the same, the pattern starts to change. And if you noticed at about a half wavelength, it's got this nice two-lobe structure. Uh, you've got an, two beams going in opposite directions, no side lobes. Now watch, ha watch what happens as I get further apart. Okay, something starts to growing at the top and bottom and right about there you're at another half wavelength apart. You've got these big giant side lobes. Well let's keep moving it apart. New side lobes start to form as it moves further and further apart. And there you go, it's about another half wavelength. So as you can see as these things pull apart about every half wavelength a new uh, lobe appears. And uh, as these go apart, you also notice that the, the uh, main lobe here, the horizontal thing, gets narrower and narrower. That's a uh, characteristic of antennas. That, it, you know, in a wide, if one of the dimensions wide, the main beam narrows. Well, I'll just let this go for a while, and you just keep adding more and more lobes as the two uh, get further and further apart. Now we're up to five and a half wavelengths apart, six wavelengths apart, six and a half. And you can see that they just keep adding more and more. Every About every half wavelength, you add another side lobe. Okay. Now we're going to reduce this back down, just the two lobe, st lobe structure. And we'll We'll be back in a minute.
Well, now that we've done that, we need to look at um, uh, paying some bills. So here's uh, one of our advertisers, tradepub.com. One of LearningMeasure.tv's sponsors is tradepub.com. Tradepub.com is a site where one, one can sign up for a large number of free trade publications. If you'd like to support this podcast, uh, go to the learningmeasure.tv site, scroll down to the free publications link, and choose one of the magazines or one of the, one of the publications or one of the categories and sign up through that link. Each pu publication subscribed to through this link on learningmeasure.tv website helps keep Learning Measure TV on the air. Thank you for your support. Now that we've done that, I did some more stuff with Excel, which we'll show next, is what happens as you change the phase between the two. And uh, look at how the pattern changes. Okay, now we have uh, this pattern, which is this two little pattern from the half wavelength spacing, and the phase is set for zero, so they're both at the same phase, both at the same amplitude. Now I'm going to move the phase a little bit and watch what happens. Okay, as you move the phase, have you changed the phase, the beams start of moving upward. And then you start to see a new lobe start appear down below at the bottom as the beam sort of steer up. And the upper lobes start to expand, the sort of the lower lobes. And this is going from zero basically to uh, 180 degrees and now you notice there are two lobes going up and down. This is typically called an end fire configuration. It's actually radiating up and down. Let's bring it back to zero, pretty close to zero, and go the other way. You can see it does basically a symmetric thing as you change the phase. It does the exact opposite as you saw as you went negative. So it actually does steer, what we say steer the beam. And, you know, and think of these as big sort of, there, there's uh, z-axis, there's symmetric about the z-axis, so it's like giant donut type shapes. There we go, as it gets closer and closer to 180 degrees from the other direction, it does the same thing. Well, let's move this back to zero again. Uh, it's right about, let's see, let's get it close to zero. Oops, wrong way. It's right at zero. Let's change the spacing so now we have two side lobes. Let's see what happens. Bring that out to another half wavelength. Okay, now I'm going to steer the beam again upwards. You can see what happens. The, the beam's narrower, it's still steering upwards as the phase change, the side lobes are changing. Until when you get all the way to 180 degrees, we'll be there in a second. Interesting pattern there. Sort of some sort of butterfly thing going on. Now all of a sudden you have four beams, each going off in different directions. And of course it's symmetric going the other way. If you started from zero and went the other way, it would steer down the other way until that it reached that state. Notice that the upper beam is forming two beams and the lower beam is shrinking. Kind of interesting. And it's just doing exactly what it did as I steered the phase the other direction. I'll keep that going a little bit far. Well, actually, maybe I'll just stop it there. And then let's move it back to zero and let's take a look what happens when you start adding more lobes. Okay, so let's put this back to zero and move this another half wavelength out. 
same thing as you start steering the face all the beams start moving Oops. but anyway by changing the phase between the two you get some sort of beam steering until you get all the way to 180 degrees let's move it there and again, you have some sort of end fire thing going on with a si with some side lobes. Now, this spreadsheet will be available on uh, the LearningMeasure.tv uh, website on the show notes for this show, um, so you can download it. And uh, next week, when we when I'm going to modify this so that instead of two isotropic radiators there's an array, a linear array of isotropic radiators and we'll do the same sort of thing and see what happens and uh, you probably can guess what's going to happen but uh, we'll do that next time uh, uh, so okay well I'll leave it at that for now okay that's it for this episode um, so what we've what uh, We'll do next week is move on to larger arrays of isotropic radiators and how one might uh, create a, 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 an antenna based on an array of isotropic radiators. As always, uh, if you have some suggestion on how on what you'd like to see on this podcast. Send us an email at suggestions at learningmeasure.tv and we'll try to do something about it. If you'd like to have, have us answer any questions on the air, any type of question, just send any type of question what you want and we'll decide whether we want to put it on the air. Send your email to questions at learningmeasure.tv. Finally, if you want to be on the podcast and you know sell yourself or sell your product or sell or do some sort of presentation, Send us an email at vendors at learningmeasure.tv and we'll put you on, maybe, if, as long as you're going to be in the Las Vegas area. Okay, that's it for this time. See you next time.